Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got a really fun swing card for you that I made without using the die set. There's an awesome die set from MFT, it's called the Swing Dynamics I think, and it'll help make life simpler. I don't have it yet, so I, I just went ahead and made the mechanism without the die set. It, it's, it's not that complicated, so I'm going to show you how I did that today, and if you're interested in just that, go ahead and skip to 9 minutes and 22 seconds in the video. That'll take you to where I start actually building the, the swing. Today's video is part of Jess and Laura's Hooray for 3K video hop. The next video in our hop is the first link that I've got down below. We've got some awesome prizes and some great new channels that you might want to check out. So make sure that you hop along with us. I'm going to walk you through how I made this card real quick. The first thing that I'm showing you are the pieces that I'm using. So I've got an A2 card that's a white card base there. I've got a green A2 size card front and a matching envelope. And then I've also got a little panel that's four by five and a quarter inches. I went ahead and used a Lawn Fawn stitched hillside, but I flipped it upside down to cut a layer for sand. And there's no stitching on that. Then I used this Heffy Doodle Party die, and I went ahead and I cut it out once from white glitter cardstock and again from black cardstock a couple times. I don't realize it yet, but I'm only going to use one of the black pieces. And then I've got this tropical die set from Tim Holtz here. I cut out a pair of palm trees, and then I also cut one each of these larger leaves. And it has two large flowers. I cut the smaller of the two and also a little stamen. And then that die set also has these tiny flowers. It, it's a set of three, and I cut that out twice, so I have six little flowers. Then I grab the one inch circle from my nesting circles, and I'm going to use that to cut out a pair of white cardstock pieces. I've also got a little strip of acetate here, and I've got a, one of the slide on over dies from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to use that and that circle die just to, to make my swing arm. Now the stamp set that I'm using is Heffy Doodle's uh, Wingman set, and I had already colored these birds for the coloring challenge that's going on, um, and I've been dying to use them. I also went ahead and stamped and embossed my sentiments. I've got a Simon Says stamp set here and the ones from that Heffy Doodle set, and I went ahead and I cut them out with a strip of ease. That's also a Heffy Doodle die there. And I'll have links to all of the products that I used on my blog, so you'll be able to find them. I'll also have a link to the MFT die set that'll make life easier. Um, I just don't have it yet. So that arm is basically going to have the bird on it and it'll swing back and forth. Um, and when you have that the bird on there, it's not quite heavy enough to move on its own, so I went ahead and rough cut three more little birds to, to be in the back of it, just to give them some weight. Now I'm going to speed through the rest of the coloring here. Um, I'm using my Arteza Real Brush Markers. Uh, those are what I use to color the parrots, so I wanted to use them again on the background pieces, the scenery pieces here, just so that I have consistency with strokes and colors. And I am being quick and dirty with the color that I'm applying. I'm, I'm kind of smashing it down and going fast so that I get a real streaky coverage because I'm blending colors here. Um, I, I just want to put a couple different shades down at first. And you'll notice as these dry, they start to blend together a little bit more. So I'm going to kind of set the leaves and trees aside to work on the flowers. And you don't want to get any of that green in there, so I cleaned up my mat in between. And then I'm going to use some yellows and pinks. Uh, for the big flower, I didn't have the the orange color that I was looking for, so I just combined a beige and a pink to get the color that I wanted. And then I'll color up those little flowers and the stamen as well. And as they are drying, you'll notice that those leaves have started to blend a little bit. The palm tree is not as much, so I'll go ahead and fix those. I'm going to bring in a lighter green marker here and just kind of touch up the color. And these markers, uh, I'm using Bristol Smooth 110 pound cardstock. Uh, the markers will blend and move color around a little bit when you resaturate. Uh, not as well as Copics, but, but they do blend out nicely. So I'm moving it around a little bit, getting them the way I like them. I'm going to put another coat on the trunks just to kind of smooth it out. This time I went a little slower and, and gave full coverage there. 
instead of a streaky finish. And once I had my coloring done, it's time to ink up the background. So I've got tumbled glass, distress oxide, and a homemade stencil. That's just a, a Concord and Ninth border die that I had. And I'm using my makeup brushes. This is a cheap set from Amazon that I've had for a while and I kept forgetting that I had them. And I really love them. You can go really heavy or really light with the color. You can blend out really smooth color with these. So I'm, I'm really glad that I remembered that I had them and started using them. <laughs> and I just made a, a real soft sky there. I don't want it to look stormy or anything. And now I want to add an island in the background, in the horizon. This is a trick I picked up from Jennifer McGuire. If you find a stamp that's roughly the right size and shape, you can flip it over and ink up the back side of it. So that's what I'm doing here. You'll see that the whole thing has color. And then you can stamp it on top of your horizon there. And it'll take a couple times and you're probably going to have to smooth it out too because that masking tape makes a little bump. Um, but I'm just using a, a, just a tiny little paintbrush here to move some of that color around and get it right to that line. And it looks like an island in the distance, which I love this trick. It's super cool. And uh, just take a look at the stamps in your collection, see what you've got that'll work. I used one of the birds from that same stamp set. Then I can peel up this tape and flip it around. But before I put it back in place, because I stamped a lot of gray ink on there. I want to go ahead and lift that up and clean it up just a little bit. I don't want to accidentally um, put gray into my ocean. So I've gone ahead and flipped it around and now I'm going to bring in some Twisted Citron, Peacock Feathers, and Blueprint Sketch for my ocean. Um, I wanted a real nice tropical green ocean. I remember flying into the Bahamas and from the airplane you can actually see the ocean floor on a clear day and it's just gorgeous. It's really a beautiful color. Plus I'm also trying to match the, uh, the color a little bit from my cardstock border there. Um, I am going to use that blueprint sketch to make the horizon line a little bit darker and blend it a little bit more. Um, I'm not worried about that green down at the bottom because the sand is going to cover most of it. But I do want to just kind of mix these colors a little bit. And I'm going to bring in another homemade stencil. This is, I used the Lawn Fawn, the wave borders to cut this one. Um, and I'm not too worried about making it perfect. I'm going to blend it a little bit more. All I really want to do is add some texture to my water. Most of it will be covered up by the trees and the birds and the sand layer. But some of it's visible, so you do want to get it down there. And I didn't want to flick on any water to this. I, I kind of wanted all of my color to be to be colorful, not live any of the colors there. And then that gray line I can just fix with a Copic marker real quick. And my background's done. Now I need to ink up my sand. And I've got uh, scattered straw, antique linen, and the uh, forest moss just to give me a little bit of the dark flecks that you sometimes find in sand and I'll go ahead and brush these on I am not trying to be smooth I am trying to be a little bit splotchy at the end I'll, I'll come back in with a little more yellow to kind of soften the whole thing but I am I'm kind of going for a splotchy look first and I'm just gonna keep testing my colors uh, make sure everything looks good together and then with that forest moss. You could also substitute a brown if you want, but I have a lot of other green stuff on this, so I thought it would just go together nicely. I'm just going to add some splotches of the dark color there so the sand has more texture. And then I'll go ahead and blend it all out just a little bit more. And I want to show you a quick trick. This is how I've been cleaning these makeup brushes. Um, I've got my old stamp and scrub that I used to use to clean my wood mounted stamps. Um, I'm just going to spray a little bit of water in there and because those bristles are synthetic they don't absorb the color it just sits on top of them so they clean up real easy. Now we can go ahead and work on the swing arm mechanism here. Um, like I said before MFT has a die set that will make this for you and it's probably much easier some time consuming or time saving steps there. Um, this way is probably a little more con time consuming. But what we really want to do is make, think of a pendulum, the arm of a, like a grandfather clock. We want to mimic that. And I'm just tracing those dies. You can freehand it if you want. Uh, but for me, it was easier and a little bit cleaner if I trace those dies. 
and then I'll go ahead and trim it out with my scissors. And that piece of acetate isn't quite as wide as the circles. That's not a problem. But I didn't want to use just a quarter inch strip down the center because I'm going to punch a hole through the middle of it. And my hole punch is a quarter inch. So I didn't want to cut the, the acetate. Um, I wanted a, a full piece of acetate underneath there. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Um, to get rid of any of those Sharpie marks, I've just squirted on a little bit of rubbing alcohol and that cleans it right up. And now I can go ahead and um, sandwich the little pendulum between the two white cardstock layers that I have. And I have yet to find a wet glue that actually sticks to acetate. Acetate for me is kind of one of those problem child <laughs> when it comes to adhesive. I've tried every kind of wet glue and some of them will hold for a little bit but they tend to release. So for me using the super tape here from Thermoweb or the uh, score tape from Sequang, those work excellent for acetate and I, I try to avoid wet glues with that. So I went ahead and I put that double stick tape on both sides of my pendulum and then I can go ahead and uh, stick it to the little white circles and see how that acetate covers most of that circle y you want room around it because now we're going to bring in the quarter inch hole punch and we're going to punch through the center of that and if you had punched through the acetate it may not be as strong so that's why I, I recommend actually making a, an acetate pendulum instead of just a strip um, I'm going to grab my powder tool because we did punch through that adhesive and I'm going to try to make sure that that I powder it up there. And then this is a little tab. Uh, my Favorite Things makes these as well, uh, but this is one my husband has 3D printed for me. I couldn't find him one day and he just was uh, 3D printing everything he could at the time. <laughs> so he 3D printed a bunch of little tabs for me. I'll have those linked down below for you too on, on MFT. Um, but you do need something a quarter of an inch round and about an eighth of an inch tall. And I'm just reaming out that hole a little bit with my pencil um, just so that the tab will fit in there and it can swing around it. If you don't have those little tabs, you could stack up the confetti in your quarter inch hole punch and you will need to ream out the hole a little bit more um, on the pendulum too for the same reason. Um, or you can also cut off the tip of a, a new eraser and use that as well. So once you've got your hole uh, all good to go and your little tab can swing freely around it or it'll swing freely around your tab, you want to line it up on your card front and mark it with a pencil so that you know where to glue it down. Uh, before we do glue it down, because it is chunky, it's an eighth of an inch thick, I want to go ahead and glue the flat pieces to my card. So I'm going to glue that green piece down, and then I'm also going to glue the ink blended piece down in place. I just wanted a, a little green border, that's why it's trimmed down a little bit more. So I'm going to glue those flat to my card. And then I can weigh it down with an acrylic block. And now I'm going to use tacky glue to glue the little tab in place. And these tabs, as well as the ones from MFT, they work fine with tacky glue. You don't need to use the uh, double stick tape. You can, but you don't need to. It just seems to be acetates that are the problem children for me. Um, and so I went ahead and I glued that down. I'm going to push it down with my finger. Any glue that squishes out, I want to clean away with my stylus just so that it won't grab the, the pendulum there. And then I'm going to figure out how far up I want the bird on that arm. You can trim it down if you need to. And I'm using more double stick tape on that acetate there again, just for the bird. And I'm actually going to put it on both sides because those three little white birds up in the corner there, those are going to get glued onto the back. Um, the reason you need those is because to get that arm to swing, you need a little bit of weight up there. You could substitute a penny or a small washer. Um, a penny for this bird wouldn't fit, you'd see it. But if your element is a little bit larger, you could use something a little heavier like that. Um, but in this case, I'm just using three more of those birds. There is a coordinating die set for this stamp set. I don't have it, so I had cut those out um, 
with my scan and cut and at the time I didn't realize that I would have cut three more out of white cardstock but I didn't know what I was going to do with them at the time so these are just roughly traced and cut out a little bit smaller. So I'll go ahead and glue those all down and then now my arm is complete. Um, it needs to get put in place but before we put the sand layer on top to lock it in, uh, we need to glue down the trees and we also need to mark how far to the left and to the right we want it to swing. So I'm going to bring in that sand layer and I will use my pencil just to mark how far on either side I want it to go. I'm just kind of penciling in a little cone and that cone is the uh, no foam zone. <laughs> um, you want to make sure that you don't cover that up at all so that the arm can swing around in there. Now if we put the sand layer on top before the trees then you would have a problem gluing the trees down later so I want to glue those in place now and I am gonna use um, my PVA glue. This PVA glue is in a fine line bottle. This is my favorite way of, of using PVA and when I glue down my tree, I am going to make sure that I get glue onto all of those little tiny points on the palm fronds especially because the bird is going to fly over them. You don't want those to stick up and catch the bird at all. And I'm trimming down that other tree and I'm going to do the same thing, gluing it as flat as possible and getting glue on all of those little points so I can really mash it down and flatten it up as much as possible. And I'm not 100% certain. I know I want the sentiment up in the top corner there, but I'm not sure if the bird is going to fly into it. So I'm, I'm going to kind of lay it out here. And I'm going to go ahead and start stacking the words. So I stacked two of the layers, the black layers, together on top of each other. And then I realized if I had four layers, the bird is going to run into the, the P the little um, point of that pea. So four layers would make it too thick and the bird wouldn't have enough room to move around. So I decided to just use um, two layers. So I offset the white glitter on top of that black so it looks like a drop shadow. And I will end up gluing those flat down so that the bird can pass right on top of it. And even though I do normally like a chunky sentiment, um, in this case it, it just wasn't going to work out. So I pop that other little bird up in top of the palm tree or on top of the palm trees with uh, some foam tape. And then for my sand, I'm going to use a double layer of foam tape. So I, I just stuck it two layers on top of it themselves. So it's it's an eighth of an inch thick now. And then I split it down the middle just so I can uh, get more use out of it. Also, I don't need it to be a half inch wide. And I'm going to make sure that when I am putting the foam down, I'm not coming into that cone at all. I do want to come up to the edges of the cone a little bit at the top of the sand so that I have stops so that the bird doesn't travel too far in either direction, but I don't want to impede the wheel at all and I don't want to get into that cone at all. So I'll just go ahead and lay those down. Sometimes it's easier to put the foam on your card front instead of on the, the popped up piece, especially down at the bottom where you know for sure it will cover it. And then at the top of the layer, it's easier to put it on the on the sand itself so that you know you don't put it up too high. And I realized I wasn't quite close enough. I wanted to, the stop to be a little further in, so I just grabbed another little piece here. And then that's all the foam tape I need to pop up the sand. So I'll go ahead and peel off that release paper. And then I can stick it down. I'm just lining it up. There we go. And now I'm going to bring in that powder tool again and those pieces of foam that are closest to the acetate where, where it'll run into it, I'm going to just add a little powder to make sure that it won't get stuck at all. And I'm making sure that it's swinging freely, and it is. So now I can finish decorating the card here. And I'm going to lay out my different pieces. Um, I was toying with the idea of putting the shake your tail feather sentiment at the top of the card, but then it would move the rest of the sentiment down too far for me, so I, I decided to, to put it down at the bottom. 
and I'm going to glue the hibiscus together. Now when you cut that out, that flower actually has a center that it, it cuts separately and it will pop out if you're not careful. So I used um, the stamen to glue those two pieces together on the front and then the foam on the back and that just locks those two pieces together. Um, also you saw me kind of shape it a little bit with my hand and just stick it into the palm of my hand and, and use your thumb to curl the edges a bit. And for the leaves, I'm going to overlap them and let them hang off the edges a little bit. And I am just going to glue them flat to the sand. But I didn't take the glue all the way to the very edge. I'm not worried about the, the bird hitting these because they're popped up higher. And if you leave a little bit of um, area with no glue, then the, the leaves have a little more dimension. Not a lot. And I didn't try to curl them up or anything. Um, so I just glued those down and then I popped up that flower with the single layer of foam tape and that bird has a double layer of foam tape so he's sitting on top and now I can get my sentiment glued in place. I do want to try to make the, um, the black strips all parallel to the top and bottom of the card and party can be askew, that's no big deal. I am taking care to glue every bit of the bottom of those um, words in the word party so that the bird won't hit any bumps. They're, they're going to be as, as flat as possible just like I did with a palm tree. And I like, uh, I love a good punny card so um, I like happy bird day. It goes well with these adorable little parrots here. And then I had enough dimension on that layer at the bottom so I decided to glue this sentiment on flat as well. And we are almost done. I'm just going to bring in the tiny little flowers and those other three feathers. And I'm shaping these flowers as well. I'm just pushing them into the palm of my hand. That, that cups them a little bit and gives them a little dimension. And I'll figure out placement. I thought about putting one of the flowers in the word party, but again, I didn't want the bird to hit it and cause any problems there. So I changed my mind on that. And when I glue these down, I'm using my tweezers and I'm trying to just put glue in the center so that when I push it down, I'm not, I'm not pushing the whole thing down and I'm leaving that dimension in place. Um, I'm also using a stylus there just to, to push right in the middle and that gets the glue to stick down, but the edges are still going to puff up a little bit. And don't worry about it if you drop one somewhere. That glue is uh, clear and it dries matte as well, so you won't see it if, it if you get a little where you don't want it. And after I've got my flowers in place, it's time to put the little feathers down. And feathers, for me, these are kind of like sequins. It's always the hardest thing to figure out where you want those. <laughs> um, so I played with them a little bit, and once I figured out where I wanted them, um, I'll just glue those down. I decided to put those two on the top layer so it looks more like they're floating through the air. And this one that is in the bird's flight path, I want to make sure that I've got him um, flat down as much as possible. So again, glue all the way to the edges. And then these guys are, the yellow one's kind of hanging off the edge there, but it can't catch that acetate because of the uh, double layer of foam tape. And then my last little detail are these tiny little rhinestones. And these, uh, these came from like a nail decorating kit my sister gave me a long time ago. They're great for a little sparkle. I didn't add any extra glue, or I'm sorry, glitter to the card because the word party has a lot of glitter there. And these parrots, they just have a ton of color. They pop on their own. So I did want something for the flowers, but I didn't want it to be overpowering. So these little rhinestones, they only glitter a bit in the light. I mean, they, they have facets, so that they'll catch the light, but they don't take over, and they still add something to it. So I'm happy with these details, and I did decide to go ahead and put one on each of the little points of the, the stamen here. And then after I get these done, the only thing left to do is to trim off the um, extra uh, leaves so that it'll fit inside my envelope. So 
So I'm going to trim those away with my scissors. I did grab my bigger scissors for the, the palm fronds. I'm a lefty and sometimes it's hard for me to, to line it up at the top left corner. Um, so those longer scissors help. And I did decide that um, I didn't want to trim off the edge of the, the lower right hand leaf there. It still fits in the envelope. So I left those kind of hanging off the edge there. And then I felt like I had a little bit of a hole in this palm tree. So I grabbed one of the pieces that I had trimmed off and I just went ahead and glued it in place there and then trimmed it one more time. So I kind of filled in that hole and made it feel like a, a fuller palm tree there, more like a, a jungle. And then that finishes this card. So I hope that I have inspired you to give a swing card a try. And like I said, I will have links in my blog for the MFT die set and those little spinner tabs. I also mentioned that this is part of Jess and Laura's Hooray for 3K video hop. The next video in the hop is the very first link in my description down below. Please go ahead and hop along with us. There are some awesome prizes. You'll probably even find some fun new channels to follow. All of the products that I used are in my blog, so I've got a link to that as well. If you like today's video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're interested. You can also click that bell so you don't miss any new videos. And I've got a few more videos here for you if you like interactive cards. And all of the contest details are down below as well. So thanks for swinging by today and please keep hopping along with us.